be able to sit down and play gospel piano with ease, playing quarter moves like the pros, incredible harmonic progressions, amazing melodic lines, and more? Well, the good news is this. We've created something we call the Musicians Accelerated Growth Framework, or MAG Framework for short, that's specifically designed to help you do this and do it quickly. So I want to show you why achieving accelerated growth doesn't have to be a hard, complicated, or overwhelming process. Um, but we can get started right now in five minutes. In the last video, I showed you why just having a great musician show you how to play a song isn't the best way to achieve rapid um, and lasting growth. Um, and I actually introduced you to the MAG framework and explain why it's a better option. Now, just in case you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link to it somewhere um, below the video um, so you can go back and do that because there was a lot that we covered there. And if you're really serious about growing, you don't want to miss those details. Additionally, we have created the premium membership that contains all of these concepts and a lot more. So if you're interested in that, make sure you put your name on the early bird wait list and I'll put a link to that as well to make sure you have a chance of getting in the membership. Now with that being said, let's go to the keyboard and let me show you how you can get the results fast with the MAG framework. Two of the concepts in the MAG framework are diatonic chord substitutions and inversions. And these two concepts by themselves are pretty straightforward and kind of easy to grasp. Um, but what I want to do is combine these two concepts and show you how you can create some powerful new progressions and sounds. So let's first make sure you understand diatonic chord functions. In every key, there are seven diatonic chords. And diatonic just means of the key. So if we're in the key of C, and we can just kind of build our chords. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it repeats. So I'm just going up the scale, the C major scale. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished, all right? And then it repeats. And we can do something really interesting. We can group these by their diatonic function or their function, all right? And this is true for any key, not just the key of C. So you can use this anywhere, all right? So there are three groups. There's the tonic group, subdominant, and dominant, right? The tonic group is made up of chords that are stable, that don't really want to move anywhere. Um, so of course, C major, and then we have E minor and A minor. So three chords in this group, C major, E minor, and A minor. Now why do these chords not want to move? Well, in the key of C, and any key for that matter, um, the C, E, G, or root third, fifth, these are stable tones, they don't want to move. Um, and so if you look at C major, of course this has all three of those notes, so it's really stable. Um, e minor has two of them, so it's still stable. And A minor has two of those notes, so it's really stable. And so even if the other chords have unstable tones because they have two or three of these stable tones um they're home base they do not want to move and that's what makes them part of the tonic group all right the next group is subdominant the classic subdominant chord is the four chord or f major so one two three four f major um, and its partner is d minor uh, what makes the distinguishing factor or the distinguishing note in this group is f all right this this is a tone that wants to move generally wants to fall down. So this group is not as stable as the tonic group. And then the last group is the dominant group. And the five chord is the dominant group in the dominant group. And then we have the seven chord, the B diminish goes in there. Now there's, there's uh, debates about whether the, the seventh chord should be included, but we're going to include it. Um, now what distinction notes of this group are the B and the F. These two notes want to move. They, they're not stable. They want to move to they want to move. You hear that? All right. So we have three groups, tonic, subdominant, and dominant. All right. The next thing I want to talk about really quickly before we get into the playing is inversions. All right. So inversions are just rearranging the note or really quickly, just having a different note on the bottom of your chord. So let's take a C major chord. This is C major root position. Now, what if I take the C and put it on top? This is still a C major chord, but it's in what we call first inversion because the C is not on the bottom, it's the E on the bottom. If I invert it again, this is still a C major chord, it's still the note C, E, G, but we have a G on the bottom. So this is gonna be second inversion. Now if I had a seven, uh, four note chord and I invert it, so we have root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. They have a third inversion when you have four note chords. Okay, 
So now let me give you one little pro tip. This can get a little tricky because y'all tell me what chord is this or what inversion is this? Is this first inversion or root position? If you look at my right hand, it's not in root position. It's looks like first inversion. But remember, inversions are based on the bottom note. What's on the bottom? C. So now we're in root position. This is a root position chord because C is on the bottom. All right. So that's the little primer. Now we're going to get into this. So now here's where we can see the power of combining these two simple ideas, creating some incredibly complex sounding progressions. All right. So let's take the first eight chords of a song, um, Amazing Grace. And so we know the chords are C, C, F, C. And I'm going to do these changes, A minor. Um, I'm going to make it a little fancy. Sus, and then resolve it. And then... So those are going to be my chords. Now what I want to do is I want to label each chord by its function. So the C major is tonic, so all the C's are going to be get a T by them. The F is going to get a uh, subdominant. Um, and the second line of chords, the A minor, D7, D sus, D7, and the G, I'm going to leave those alone. I'm not going to mess those. I'm going to, just going to mess with the first line, okay? And now what I want to do is I'm going to substitute by function. So if it's a tonic chord, I'm, I'm going to put another chord from the tonic group in there to replace it. So uh, for the first chord, instead of C major, I'm going to play A minor. And then the second C, instead of playing C, I'm going to play E minor. For the F, instead of the F, I'm going to play D minor. And then for the last C on that first line, I'm going to play E minor again. All right. So let's try playing it and see how that sounds. That, that gave the song a completely different sound. Let's play the original one. Now let's play this new one with these different chords in it. Hmm. Wow. So all we're doing is pulling chords from the chord function family, from the group, and just substituting them in. Let's play that one one more time. Here's where we get to see the power of this idea. So already our progression has gone from very tame to something, something a little, little exotic. But now we're going to make it even more exotic by inverting our chords. So for the first chord, instead of playing it A minor with the A on the bottom, let's make it second inversion. So we're going to put an E on the bottom. All right, so for the E minor, I already have the E on the bottom, so I'm gonna stay there. So I put root position. All right, for the next chord, uh, the D minor, I'm gonna do, let's do first inversion, so I have F on the bottom. We're playing a D minor chord with F on the bottom. Now, this looks a lot like F6, so, um, well, it is the same notes. Uh, so, so don't be fooled, but this is D minor first inversion, and then, going to E minor. Let's go E minor first inversion. So the G on the bottom. All right. And now for this A minor, I'm going to make it an A minor seven. So these are notes. So I'm going to do third inversion, A minor seven. So that means G is going to be on the bass in the bottom. So. so. Now for this D sus nine to the D seven, I'm going to do second version. So that means the D is going to be on the, on the um, bottom. Now for this G, it's going to be first inversion. I can even walk it up to a G second inversion. 
So I have a D on the bottom, you see that? So let's play through it all and see how it sounds. So let's let's do it one more time. One more time. Wow. Now that really sounds completely different than where we started. So let, let's let's hear the difference. So let's play the original one and then play this one where we've added diatonic chord substitutions and inversions and see how it sounds. So here it is. Hmm. That's beautiful. But let's add these diatonic chord substitutions and inversions and see what we come up with. <laughs> it gives you a completely different sound. Uh, you still have the essence of the song there, but all of a sudden you get these different tensions and textures. And the exciting thing is this was just one path. We're just scratching the surface. There are literally hundreds of ways we could have altered um, this chord progression. So literally right now you have hundreds of ways um, that you can alter progressions to make them sound fresh, exciting, exotic, and new. So in the upcoming opening of the premium membership, I'll be sharing a lot more strategies with you, such as understanding complex music, adding levels of harmony to your playing, improvisation for gospel music, and so much more. So make sure you stay on the lookout um, because in a few days, I'll release more information about it and I'll show you exactly what's included um, in this membership. Now in the next video, I'll show you a simple trick you can use to quickly create those crazy chordal moves that musicians love to hear. This is literally the number one secret that I use um, and I've been using for years um, and I've only talked about it once publicly and that video isn't available anymore. So stay tuned because what I'm about to share with you um, in the next video is going to blow your mind. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to show you what I have in store for you in the next video. So until then, be blessed and happy practicing.